Good afternoon, everyone. The first item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 12425 in the name of Rachel Hamilton on the culture and heritage value of agriculture. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Rachel Hamilton to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Presiding officer, and may I refer members to my register of interests. I'm delighted to host the debate today on the importance of cultural her heritage value of agriculture. We definitely saw the very best of rural Scotland at the Royal Highland Show last week, and this very much reinforces the importance of our farming heritage in Scotland. It's rightly described as the greatest show on earth, and it certainly lives up to that claim. This year was another fantastic year for attendance with 190,000 people attending from all corners of Scotland to attend the best showcase of Scottish agriculture and produce. The show delivers over 65 million in economic benefit to the UK, with visitors expected to have spent around 8 million on shopping at the event. It is the hard work of those who organise the agricultural shows that we owe a great uh, debt of gratitude. As I allude to in my motion, 10% of the population attends at least one of these each year. And this is testament to their broad appeal and desire to educate and inspire people to take a greater interest in the farming and the countryside. Closer to home, the Borders host some of the best agricultural shows in the UK, and I thoroughly recommend that if you haven't been to one, to come along. The largest show is the Border Union Agricultural Show in Kelso, held on the last Friday and Saturday of July, and that showcases the best of Borders farming. There are many other great shows, uh, namely the Yarrow Show, the Berwickshire Show in Duns, and Newcastleton Show. And the breadth and variety of these shows really allows for towns and villages to attract the best of farming, but also tourism too. Presiding officer, the Scottish countryside hosts a vast wealth of tourism and business opportunities which employ local people, support the rural economy and display the very best of regional produce. People have a hunger for locally produced food and drink. And in recent years, we've seen a real boom in interest in Scottish and local produce. And may this continue for a very long time. One example of a tremendous story is Born in the Borders. And it's an outstanding example of diversity in farming. And it encapsulates the best of the borders um, with the farmer using his own malt malting barley um, to produce craft beers. And he's also now producing wonderful gins. And trust me, they're definitely worth a try. Let's not forget the cultural importance of the countryside. Um, the National Sheep Association highlighted in a recent paper, for example, stone walls and barns have a practical purpose to contain stock, but they're also an important link to local history. Environmental stewardship encourages the preservation of heritage features such as ridge and furrow ploughing and old sheep washes. Cultural heritage covers traditional practices, name places, customs and dialect too. And these characteristics really shape the rural identity uh, of our local communities and attract tourists as well uh, to visit rural areas. Old farm cottages have been transformed into holiday lets, farmsteading converted into farm shops and the list goes on. The potential of the Scottish countryside is massive and yet it could be exhausted even more. It is an example such as these where rural businesses are directly bringing skills, knowledge and employment into the countryside. Presiding officer, I believe that strong farming tradi uh, tradition of farming in Scotland must continue to be passed on to the next generation. The average farmer, as we know, is aged 59 and it's therefore crucial we attract new blood and importantly women to agriculture. I've seen the first-hand excellent work of the Royal Highland Education Trust carrying uh, what the stuff that they carry out encouraging children to develop an interest in farming. Indeed, their um, stand at the Royal Highland show was absolutely teeming with school children. I would actually like to see the Scottish Government allocate more funding to put RET on a more sustainable uh, footing in order for uh, the, the coordinators who uh, look after the volunteers to be able to reach more schools and for more schools to access the good work uh, that they do. In my constituency, uh, the Border Union Agricultural Society have a countryside day. And this year, 1,200 primary five children from over 60 schools across the borders gathered at Springwood Park in Kelso um, to be part of this. And it's now in its sixth year. And it educates young people about rural industry, food production and the environment. And it had such a buzz about it. And the society is passionate about educating regions' children about farming and food production. 
I'd like to see other days like this, such as the countryside days right across Scotland. Um, they inspire bright, talented young people to choose one of the most diverse careers that the, the region's rural industries offer and instill a love and appreciation of the countryside that will protect and sustain our rural life and economy for generations to come. Moving on slightly to education, and um, Adam Henson, one of Brit Britain's best-known farmers, has called for an introduction of a GCSE in agriculture. Employability Minister Jamie Hepburn said he wanted to make sure that the labour market is in a position to support projected growth and supply the next generation of professionals for the industry. Recent figures from UCAS have shown that agriculture at degree level is starting to gain po popularity. And as a graduate at Harper Adams, I can vouch for that. Higher education courses in agriculture, horticulture and animal care have risen by 117%. And perhaps I could put it to the Minister that a formal qualification in farming and rural issues from the SQA for school pupils should be considered in Scotland so that it introduces and inspires young people to take up a career in farming or the wider rural economy. And perhaps bring that age level of 59, the average age of 59, down so that we are bringing new talent into the industry. In addition, the popularity of the young farmers remains strong. And as a former member of my local young farmers club, I benefited from the social, the educational and the charitable opportunities from raising money through barn dances to debating competitions and stock judging. In fact, I was a, a keen flower arranger as well. But the young farmers were part of my life and have been part of the fabric of rural Scotland for 80 years. The young farmers motto created in the 1950s still remains relevant today. Better farmers, better countrymen, better citizens. It is vital in capturing the interest of young people and encouraging them to take the rural route when thinking about career choices. Ultimately, in order to retain expertise and to attract new talent to the countryside, we must do more to encourage new entrants to farming, both male and female. And I was delighted to attend the Women in Agricultural event at the Highland Show, along with um, Emma Harper, and see an enthusiastic and determined group of women who are involved in agriculture. And we must ensure that this talent is fully realised. And I know that Fergus Ewing is, is giving uh, 250,000 backing from the Scottish Government, but I hope that that is in parity with the amount that he has given to male entrants into agriculture. And in conclusion, presiding officer, I'm so grateful to all members for supporting my motion today. It's vitally important we speak about our proud agricultural past and debate and discuss how we can move forward in rural Scotland in order to realise the full potential of our fantastic countryside. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. We move to the, the open debate and it's speeches of four minutes, please. Emma Harper, followed by Peter Chapman. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my colleague Rachel Hamilton for bringing this debate to Chamber today and salute her thorough contribution. It is really important that we highlight the importance that the experts on the farms and in the fields provide us across Scotland. I'd also like to remind Chamber that I am the Parliamentary Liaison Officer for Cabinet Secretary Fergus Ewan. I grew up in the southwest of Scotland on two dairy farms, one near the Lochans, close to Stranraer, and the other near Dumfries. My father was a dairyman and I learned to drive tractors before I could even drive a car. Agricultural shows in the southwest, they start in Stranraer and they work their way east to Wigtown, Stewartry, which is the Castle Douglas show, and then Dumfries and Lockerbie. I've enjoyed attending them all and I plan on attending them all again this summer. Last week at the Royal Highland Show, I managed to attend both Thursday and Friday. And I spoke to many folks over the two days about promoting food, farming, production, science, sustainable farming, as well as sheep worrying. There's a lot of concern over what exiting the EU will do regarding tariffs, stability in the supply chain and EU farm workers. And it's important that we remember the workers on dairy farms are not seasonal workers. They are here all year long. Their kids are in rural schools and they are part of the rural community. And I'm excited to see the progress of the Women in Agriculture Task Force headed up by Joyce Campbell, who's a Sutherland sheep farmer, along with the Cabinet Secretary. I attended the Women in Ag breakfast, as Rachel Hamilton has just highlighted, and we heard from Joyce Campbell, Kate Rowley and Minette Batters, who's the NFU uh, UK's president. And we are all encouraging more women into agriculture. 
The National Farmers Union has presented their steps to change document and their suggestions for change as we are heading for the EU exit on March 29th. I would encourage everyone to read the document so we can all be better informed. And it's essential that people across Scotland connect with the food producers. It's important that kids grow up learning where the food comes from, how many miles it travelled, and that there are lots of people involved in getting that food from farm to fork. I see the tide turning in Scotland. I think we are witnessing a change in attitude towards protecting and promoting the provenance of our good produce. And one expert presented the argument at the show that uh, provides a false impression of what farmers do. He said that the public observes sheep being delicately trimmed at eyeball distance with scissors and the beasts are presented all washed and manicured. The perception is that, well, the public aren't really seeing the opportunity to what farmers are actually doing, like getting covered in muck and stuff like that. So a direct rebuttal to this comment was made at the Women in Ag meeting when the Royal Highland Education Trust was commended for its work in encouraging school visits to farms. And indeed, RET in the South West, coordinated by Fiona Jameson, has been successful for first and second year kids to experience directly what SRUC Crichton campus visits um, are like, and that is an actual working farm. So like many other farmers, the NFU Vice President, Gary Mitchell, conducts open farm days and gets primary four kids onto his farm. So consequently, Gary has 12 out of his 14 employees sourced locally. So, provide, presiding officer, I applaud the work of farmers, growers and crofters and the rural businesses that each support. From farm to fork, Scotland's economy is rural. Thank you very much. Call Peter Chapman, followed by Alex Rowley. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And it's always good to talk agriculture. And uh, with that in mind, I need to declare an interest because obviously I am involved in agriculture and my own farm and business back home. And I would like to thank my colleague, Rachel Hamilton, here for, for bringing forward this motion. It's such a wide-ranging motion. We could almost talk about anything, to be honest, but it, it gives us an opportunity to, to widen out the debate. But having said that, I also want to speak about the Royal Highland Show. I spent two days there last week as well, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, as I always do every year. And it's a great opportunity to showcase our agriculture. But it's also a great opportunity for farm and folk to meet and greet each other. There's a social issue there which is very, very important. There's businesses to be done, but there's also uh, friends and family to meet. And often you only meet them once a year at the Royal Highland Show. And obviously there are many good regional shows all over the country. And my nearest one is New Deer Show, and that's been going for 170 years. So that's got a great history. And uh, just a wee bit further away from me, Turriff Show is the biggest two-day show in Scotland. And they both are fantastic events, uh, fantastic social events, but they're fantastic to show, just showcase what the, the great agricultural uh, uh, project we have in Scotland. I need to pick up on the RHET, which uh, Rachel mentioned. And I, I, I visited their stand at the, the Highland Show as well, and I thought it was a tremendous show. And, and it's really so important that we are educate our young kids, our youngsters, as to where their food comes from and what it's all about. And I think they do get a wee bit of funding from the Scottish Government, but it is fairly small beer. And I would echo the plea to maybe give them a wee bit more funding, because I think they do do a, a great job. Education in general, I've, I've been involved in that uh, as far as the SRUC is concerned. I have had concerns about what was happening at Krebs in the local college in Aberdeen, but I think we have now got some more clarity going forward, and I, have, I think we have secured its future much better than, than it was possibly the, 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 the state of play in the past. But it is a great opportunity to celebrate what farmers do and what farmers deliver. And the first thing that farmers deliver, and they always want to do it, is, and it's a reason for them getting up in the morning, is to deliver first quality, high quality food. And that's what they do, and that's what they're about. But they do more than that, of course. They manage the countryside. Most of Scotland, there's very little of Scotland that's actually wild land, purely wild land. Most of it is managed in some way, shape, or form. And it's farmers and landowners that do that. And we deliver biodiversity. We deliver wildlife. 
and we deliver healthy living for the population that stays in the towns and the cities because we allow them to have access to our land so they can go out and enjoy the scenery, they can go out and have some fresh air and they can go out and have some good exercise. So we deliver a lot, farmers deliver a lot, but as I say, food production is the, is the main aim of what we do. And we do it to a very high standard. There is no question about it that animal welfare standards in, in the UK are, are as high as anywhere in the world. We have done a lot to deliver uh, healthy meat. We use less antibiotics now than ever we've done. We're driving that down. And we use technology. You know, when we're growing cereals, we use a lot of GPS technology now. Targeted inputs is important. It's important for the environment, but it's also important for our bottom line. We need to put inputs on just where they are needed, just in the right place and just in the right quantities. And we are doing that more and more. And of course, our raw materials, the food production that we produce is, all, is, is what uh, sustains Scotland Food and Drink. Scotland Food and Drink has been a huge success story. It's the biggest manufacturing industry in, in Scotland. It's producing 15 billion pounds to the economy every year. And the, the target is to double that to 30 billion by 2030. Now that's an ambitious target. And I think it can be achieved, but it can only be achieved if we do it in conjunction with our farmers. Thank you. Call Alex Rowley to be followed by Gail Ross. Presiding officer. Agriculture in every civilised nation has been justly regarded as an object of the first importance and of all the useful arts the most deserving of public attention and encouragement. These words which still hold true today were first written in the year 1800 in the book General View of the Agriculture of the County of Fife. I am pleased to speak in this debate recognising the culture and heritage of the value of agriculture throughout Scotland and I would congratulate Rachel Hamilton on securing the debate today. Fife has a long standing varied and proud agricultural heritage. Anyone visiting Fife can notice firsthand that it is, its landscape is carved out by agriculture and industry. Covering 132,000 hectares and farmland area of 97 thousand hectares, Fife boasts 524 farms of 50 hectares or more, but in total there are over 1,500 farms and holdings in Fife, including 17 dairy farms, 19 specialist sheep farms, 20 specialist beef, 202 cereal, 44 specialist poultry and 282 mixed. So Fife is also, as well as being industrial, it is a farming area. It is clear to anyone that agriculture is a significant part of our local economy. And as well as being a necessity, it is also something that people take pride in and wish to celebrate. Indeed, the motion takes note of various agricultural shows that take place across the country. And of course, Fife is no exception to this. Since 1821, an annual show has been held in Fife to encourage and showcase breeding of livestock. Nowadays, one of the most popular agriculture shows in the country, the Fife Show, takes place near Cooper every year. The show is run by volunteers and its aim is to promote, support and work with agriculture in Fife and beyond. And we recognise the value that having something like this Fife show brings to the local area. Thousands of visitors come to see livestock, vintage and modern machinery, game fairs, entertainment, as well as sampling some wonderful food and drink. It is estimated that between 14 and 15,000 people attend the show in Cooper every year. These events provide fantastic family outings while at the same time celebrating our shared agri agricultural heritage. And as well as the heritage events such as these are part of our modern culture. Near my own home village of Kelty, the West Fife Show takes place, which was founded in 1962. And again, this event provides a wonderful outing for families, a chance to educate everyone about agriculture, rural life, and how their food is actually grown and produced. 
So even though I come from a background presiding officer of coal mining in Fife, I and the communities across Fife are well aware of the importance of agriculture to our local economy and indeed our way of life. And I am proud to join others in this chamber today to celebrate all that is good about agriculture. Thank you. I call Gail Ross to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. And I also thank Rachel Hamilton for bringing this timely debate to the Chamber, given that we are now very much in agricultural show season. And to every farmer, crofter, food producer and person that works on the land, I thank you as well. I grew up in the Caithness countryside and spent many long weekends and holidays with the Mackays on the neighbouring farm, Biggins, or Beagins as it is in Caithness dialect. I belong to Bower Young Farmers, the Scottish Young Farmers Club of the Year 2016, and continue to have great friends in the farming and crofting community all across my constituency. And can I take this opportunity, presiding officer, to congratulate Bower Young Farmers junior team for winning the junior stock judging at the Royal Highland Show, and to congratulate Beth Dunnett for getting first junior individual, and Alistair McCarthy for getting second junior individual. I remember those days well. Yes, thank you. They shaped my childhood, and indeed, they shaped who I became as a person. You'll not be surprised finding new kittens in the shed or the barn, out in the tractor or in the lorry on the way to the mart, and we did have a mart in Caithness in those days. Gathering in, dipping the sheep, getting bitten by the horse, helping with the lambing, playing on the bales, and just being outside, they are some of the best memories from my childhood. But that experience made me aware of where my food comes from, gives me a huge appreciation of the hard work that farmers and crofters put in at all hours of the day and night, and gave me an inherent love and respect for animals, both farmed and wild. My constituency holds several shows celebrating agriculture, the Caithness County Show, the Sutherland Show, the Dornoch Show, and although the Black Isle Show is in Cape Forbes constituency, there's always a strong northern contingent present. Shows are a chance for like-minded people to get together, celebrate success, share best practice, and chew over the latest prices, weather, and beasts. And of course, they are immense social occasions. I think we all know that after a certain time, the beer tent at an agricultural show is the best place where all the deals are made. <laughs> Presiding officer, according to James Hunter in his book, Last of the Free, a history of the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, Agriculture has been the backbone of the Scottish countryside since at least 3000 BC. It's shaped our landscape, it has provided food for our plates, and it has been handed down from generation to generation. And it has a proud history, but we are at a stage where we need to look forward to make sure it has a secure future as well. The motion mentions bringing ruined and derelict buildings back into use, and I couldn't agree more. Some of them in my constituency unfortunately stand as a permanent reminder of the horrific circumstances surrounding the Highland Clearances, crumbling stone edifices that remind us of the people that should still be there working the land. I recently wrote a piece for the Farmer's Guardian where I spoke about Scotland becoming a good food nation. And it's essential that farmers, crofters, growers and food producers are involved in a national conversation about what we want that to look like and what they want that to look like. Presiding officer, our legislation needs to be bottom up, and I suggested that we need to get a farmer or a food producer on every enterprise agency board, every community development trust, every community planning partnership, community council, and in every meeting and advisory group, because we cannot underestimate how crucial their voices are. Thank you. John Finney, followed by Liam MacArthur. Yeah, thank you very much, President Officer. And I too would like to congratulate Rachel Hamilton for bringing forward this motion. And whilst others have talked about shows, there was a phrase in there that jumped out at me, and that was preserving and protecting heritage. And of course, Scotland's got a rich heritage, whether that's the, the, the North East um, uh, farm workers and the Bothy culture there, and Ors Bothy, Bothy Ballads, the book that would retain some of that and have family connections with that, or where I'm from in the Highlands there, where the Forestry Commission, for instance, or the States would have Bothys. <coughs> Um, so there's, there's a lot of language that people wouldn't necessarily understand now, and I, I noted that uh, 
as Hamilton talked about the dialect. Well, of course, another way of preserving the, the culture is through the language, and the Gaelic language is rich in the Highlands and plays a significant role in the uh, preservation of, of many of the traditions. So it's the role that the music plays as well in the Highland bards and the storytelling, indeed, of the travellers. And the, the motion says many farm farmers can trace their ancestral links with their land that goes back centuries. And that link with the land is vital. People have a great affection with their community. Motion also talks about productive and sustainable um, um, issues and uh, that's been alluded to with local food and the providence of, of that and increasingly there are opportunities with that and people are, are looking for innovative ways. Also talks about new entrants and I think it's very important because whilst we want to reflect in the past we also want to consider the future and you know fair play to the Scottish Government with regards to new entrants to farming and indeed the encouragement that's gone to, to the crofting communities to get young people in there. It's absolutely vital for the reasons that were outlined by Rachel Hamlet about the age um, that, that we do get young people in here. And the physical heritage is important too, and I would like to read to, in the very short time we have, to a number of uh, locations in my area. One of them is Auchendrain, which is a museum between Inverary and, and Loch Gulphead. And th this operated up until, um, indeed, uh, 1967, when the last people moved away. And it is, if you like, a, a museum where um, it was a system of a, a township, uh, and of course, in in the past, many people, um, the vast majority of people lived in the countryside and worked in the countryside and, and the township was very common and that particular model of working was very particular in, in the West Highlands of Scotland. And looking at their website today, I, I saw the phrase, and starvation was always just around the corner. So the, the history and heritage is about the struggle that people have had. Um, and of course, it's the 1700s that scientific methods come in, uh, drainage, animal breeding and the like. Um, uh, which benefited uh, uh, tatties and turnips. Uh, but of course, uh, and, and again from their website, they talk about the agricultural improvements. Farming is equivalent of the industrial revolution. Well, as my, my colleague Gail Ross alluded to there, uh, I think we beware the great improvers in some instances because certainly the Highlands is blighted by the absence of people where there should be people um, for an initiative of, of, uh, of, of that time. So also, um, the opportunity uh, that's afforded children now. Do you want to milk a cow, build a bothy, or plant a forest? That's an offer from the Sheeling Project up near Inverness, which I visited last week there, an opportunity for children to stay on the site. The Sheeling system was a system whereby people moved to the higher ground during the summer months with their livestock. A tremendous uh, uh, initiative. And finally, of course, the, 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 uh, which we're told is, was Britain's first open-air museum, and that's at Newton Moor with the Highland Folk Museum there, where there's rich opportunities um, and over 12,000 artefacts at Dam Fasgach. Um, so, diversification is also mentioned, and that's very important. Um, what we don't want is a situation where the countryside is looked upon as some sort of museum. It should be a live and vibrant place. Also mentions made of new, new lease of life. I would like to see that new lease of life. And indeed, I've heard the Cabinet Secretary um, allude to this in maybe one of the rare occasions where we have had something in common uh, uh, about such matters. And that is to see the glens repopulated. The, we need a vibrant community. And uh, um, I think, you know, debates like this will maybe spur people on in that direction. Thank you very much. And the last of the open debate contributions is from Liam MacArthur. Very much, Deputy President Officer. Can I too thank uh, Rachel Hamilton very much indeed uh, for securing this debate, uh, which I'm delighted to take uh, part in and echo very much her comments and those of others in relation to the Royal Highland Show. Although obviously the whipping system in the Scottish Liberal Democrats is more severe as I only manage one day rather than the uh, two managed by others. Um, the motion talks about 10% uh, of the population attending agricultural shows. That wasn't difficult um, to believe uh, on the basis of the turnout at, the, uh, at, the, uh, at Ingolston uh, last weekend. In Orkney, however, 10,000 people re regularly turn up to the county show uh, in the second Saturday uh, in August. This represents about half of the total population, albeit that many uh, are visitors. In a community where breeding coups outnumber inhabitants three to two, it's perhaps uh, not surprising that support for the county and the other five shows in Sandy, Shapensey, the Hope and Bury in East and West Mainland is as strong as it is. Six shows in a week demonstrates their importance to Orkney's farming community and in turn, uh, the importance of farming to the wider Orkney community. Uh, this is true, as others have said, economically. Business is done. 
Uh, sales are made, as Gail Ross, I think, rightly intimated. Uh, some of those can be impulse buys brought about by too much time spent in the beer tent, where you run the serious risk of going home the proud owner of a rather shiny new trailer or even a combine harvester. Uh, but shows play a crucial social role as well. They attract locals, former residents uh, and new visitors. They provide a gathering place that helps build that sense of community. A bewildering array of stalls run by local businesses, but also charities, voluntary groups and fundraising projects uh, is testament uh, to the reach that shows have uh, deep into their community. And without the funds raised uh, at the shows, many of these organisations would be unable to carry out the vital work that they do for the rest of the year. Even when the wind is blowing tents across the showground or conditions underfoot are akin to the Somme, as has been the case on a couple of occasions in recent years, public support for the shows in Orkney remains strong. Our shores, of course, reflect the long-standing farming her heritage in Orkney, going back to Neolithic times. It's often said that a, a, a farmer uh, couldn't put a spade in the ground without the serious risk of unearthing some significant historical artefact. Uh, but I, what we've seen over recent years is a real embracing of that heritage. Whether the Festival of the Horse and Bo Boys Ploughing Match, dating back to the 1800s, involving spectacular outfits, or the fabulous Corrigal Farm, Kerbister and Smiddy Museums in Barony Mills, all provide a fascinating insight into Orkney's uh, farming past, informing those in the local community and visitors alike. I'm conscious there's an awful lot more I could and should be saying in a debate like this, but let me finish like others have done by paying tribute uh, to the Scottish Association of Young Farmers. Uh, they are very well represented in, in Orkney, where membership is in, uh, extremely strong. And I think the motion is absolutely right to point to the, the role they play um, in generating activity uh, on a social level, preserving customs, but crucially bringing in new ideas to help ensure that farming in Orkney and across Scotland not only has a proud past, but a very bright future. And I think the embodiment of that is perhaps Kerry Annell from South Ronaldsay, that the Cabinet Secretary had the pleasure of presenting with the Young Livestock Ambassador of the Ward at Ingolston uh, last week. So can I conclude by thanking Rachel Hamilton once again for allowing Parliament to put on record our acknowledgement of the cultural and heritage value, as well as the economic value that agriculture plays in this country. Thank you. I now call Fergus Ewing to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, could I warmly congratulate Rachel Hamilton for bringing forward this, this topic uh, for debate. Very timely, if I may say so, given that I think almost all of us who have participated seem to have attended the Royal Highland Show last week, along with uh, 190,000 people who visited the show over its uh, four days. Uh, uh, and uh, indeed, I encountered so many MSPs at the show that I wondered if this chamber was entirely empty during the Thursday when uh, we were supposed to be at work. But instead, we were enjoying huge gulps of, of fresh air, unaccustomed though we are to that experience in here. Um, the Highland shows, uh, the shows across the country, as we've heard from all the contributors to the debate, are an essential part of rural life. They're part of our cultural heritage. They bring, as I think Mr. Chapman said, people together. Uh, that's a good thing, and especially at this time where many farmers and crofters live a fairly isolated life, where they may no longer have people working on a farm. Uh, and that's an easy factor to forget in these days. So it's a very social gathering, it, and it's an important annual staple in the calendar of many people in rural Scotland, and rightly so. Uh, in addition, a, a huge contribution is made by uh, many bodies, including the Royal, Royal Highland Educational Trust, RET, uh, towards young people. They received this year over 6,000 children over two days, and with uh, 30,000 youngsters in total visiting, including my own 10-year-old daughter. So they play an enormous part in bringing home the realities of farming to young people. And I do think this is an area where there's common ground across the chamber that much more can be done. In addition, the Women in Agriculture event, and Rachel Hamilton mentioned that, as did Emma Harper, was an excellent event. It was very well attended. I thought there was a real buzz in the room. The contributions by the president of the NFUS England and Wales, Minette Bassus, was outstanding. Unfortunately, I missed, I missed Kate Rowell's uh, contribution. I heard it was, was excellent. Uh, 
and uh, I thought it was a really inspiring event. And I'd like to pay tribute to Joyce Campbell, who co-chairs the Women in Agricultural Group set up in Scotland at the instance, uh, I might say it wasn't my idea, it was the First Minister's idea. I should place that clearly on the, the record and not claim credit for that. But, but, uh, but I have been co-chairing that, and it's been a really exciting experience. I think there's a potential to see um, fairly major change in unleashing the, the full potential of the female section of the population in agriculture and rural life. Uh, they achieve great things at the moment, but there's a common sense that if there's a bit more help and access to training, to other uh, opportunities, then an awful lot more can be done. And I think that's a view across the chamber as well. Rachel Hamilton pointed out quite rightly that the average age of a farmer is 59. Uh, and uh, I know that she herself hasn't experienced this, but I can inform her and verify from my own experience that life does not finish at the age of 59. Uh, there are still new chapters to be written and uh, even new experiences to be enjoyed. And there an end, presiding officer, I know you don't look, need to look so surprised, but a new experience will befall me when in August uh, I will be a chieftain, yes, of the Granton Highland Show. So I'm not quite sure what power I will have, whether it exceeds the powers that are available to me as cabinet secretary or not but I shall certainly make the most of my day in the sun in Grand Town. Um, I think that, to be serious, I think uh, much of the debate quite rightly focused, as did the motion, on new entrants. And this is an area that's very close to, I think, all of our hearts across this chamber. I'm proud of the fact that we have been doing a lot for new entrants, presiding officer. Uh, and we want, let me say, we want to do much, much more. Let me be absolutely clear about that, lest I be inadvertently accused of complacency, perish the thought, but uh, new entrance it, it is a, a, a common theme, and given the, the age profile, it's absolutely essential. I had the pleasure of meeting again some of the leaders of the Young Farmers Movement at the Royal Highland Show, and we discussed how we can move forward and perhaps seek new ways of bringing in new blood into the farming community and the wider rural economy and in recognition of the importance of encouraging new entrants the industry the Scottish Government has provided 22 million pounds in startup and capital grants since 2015 uh, and I think it's fair for me to point out that we are in fact the only part of the UK to do so. I also established a group uh, called FONE which is an acronym standing for Farming Opportunities for New Entrants, F-O-N-E. Uh, quite catchy I thought signing off so I did actually think about myself, a, a rare flash of, uh, uh, but in any event, uh, to be serious, this developed a program in order to identify holdings of land in the public sector generally, including Scottish Water, Forestry Commission, Quangos, that could be used for farming for new entrants. And Henry Graham has been um, a driving force of this, and I'm pleased to say that the initiative is uh, is ready to make available over 1,000 hectares of public land to new farmers. And that's an exercise which I think is, is the sort that we can do in Scotland that just arises from our kind of brain power and application and drive rather than actually any cash involved, although cash greases the wheels. So the phone initiative is one that we will, we will take forward and advance. And of course I will, yes. Intervention. I must apologise for missing the contribution <laughs> from other members, but as, as John uh, Finney and Gail Ross have mentioned, the, the important part that agriculture has played in sustaining and preserving the heritage and culture of uh, rural areas. Would the, the Cabinet Secretary agree that uh, new national parks could play a significant uh, role uh, in protecting, promoting, but most importantly reinvigorating the rural economy, particularly in constituencies like mine in Galloway, which is the most beautiful constituency in Scotland? That was Finlay Carson giving a short speech. <laughs> Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, well, I'm certainly aware of the arguments. Uh, I think actually that the, you know, the, the farmers, for example, I was at two farm visits this morning uh, in Ayrshire to, uh, to a, a, a South Corton and Gertside farm. Uh, and I'd thank uh, Willie and Alison Kerr and John Howie for hosting the visits. I think most of the initiatives come from individuals and communities. I'm not personally convinced that they need a new public body in order to drive forward the rural economy. But certainly 
the tag of National Park is, some people believe, uh, an asset, but one also must consider the potential consequences and planning restrictions, to which some people may argue are a counterbalance. I think it's a, 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 an argument for perhaps another day, since uh, I don't think it's in the motion, but I'm very broad-minded, as you know, presiding officer, about these things. Um, just the last point I wanted to make is this, that uh, many, I think John, John Finney and Gil Ross certainly mentioned housing and bringing back old buildings and indeed repopulating rural Scotland. This is very close to my heart. Uh, you know, without uh, waxing overly lyrical about this, it would be terrific in Scotland to see the clearances counterbalanced by uh, a declearance, a bringing back of people into the rural economy, a repeopling, if you like, of many parts of Scotland. And if we are to seriously to do that, then many policy changes will have to be put in place. But I am pleased that uh, the Scottish Government has, since 2007, awarded over £18 million through the Croft House Grant Scheme, and that has helped to build or improve over 900 Croft homes, thereby providing homes for 900 people. What a good way, I think, of spending a, a kind of relatively a moderate amount of public money. Uh, and I just mentioned that there are many other housing developments which Kevin Stewart is dealing with at the moment. So I better wind up, uh, presiding officer, I think that's the case. I think my time allotted is coming to an end. Uh, could I just, on behalf of us all, I think, thank everybody involved who is doing the voluntary work in making these shows happen, a huge amount of work and commitment. They are part of our national life. They're really important events. Uh, and above all, they're great fun. That concludes the debate and we have a short suspension until two o'clock.